Yeah, okay. Okay, let's start. Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial six. In this tutorial, we are going to review what we learned recently. It is the Fourier transform. First, we learned the Fourier transform of continuous time signal, which is called the continuous time Fourier transform. We use the Fourier, continuous time Fourier transform to convert a signal in continuous time domain into a signal in frequency domain. We denote it as the capital X J omega. It is equal to the integral of minus from minus infinity to infinity of X T times e to the power minus J omega T. We also have the inverse continuous time Fourier transform where we convert the signal in frequency domain back into the time domain. The xt is equal to one over two pi. The integral is from minus infinity to infinity, and it is the capital X j omega times e to the power j omega t d omega. So the equation three says that the Fourier transform of a signal in continuous time domain, it is a signal capital J omega, it is, is in the frequency domain. And the inverse Fourier transform transfer the signal in frequency domain back into the time domain. So for equation one, um, in this course, we adopt a convention to use the capital X J omega to de describe the, um, the signal in frequency domain. But in other material, you may see that they use the X omega without the J, it is the same as here. And in some material, you may see they use the capital X F, where F is the frequency. It is also the same, but we need to convert the omega, the angular speed into the frequency F using the relationship F is equal to omega divided by two pi. But um, over the course, I think we, we will adopt this convention to use the capital X and we use the angular speed. Also, we, uh, we learned in these days the discrete time Fourier transform. So um, the signal in this, the discrete time signal Xn, if we do the Fourier transform, we use the capital X e to the power j omega it is equal to the summation from minus infinity to the infinity and xn times e to the power minus j omega m. Similarly, we have the inverse discrete time Fourier transform. The xn is equal to one over two pi. So now the integral is not from minus infinity to infinity, it's from minus pi to pi and also the capital X e to the power j omega times e to the power j omega n. So let's see some examples. The first one, the signal xt, is this rectangular signal is equal to u t plus t minus u t minus t. So it is a continuous time signal. We do the continuous time Fourier transform use this equation. So since um, it only has value from minus t to t, so we change the integral from minus t to t and the value is one. So one times e to the power minus j omega t. So we, we, we get this integral and we substitute minus t and t. So finally we get um, it is equal to e to the power minus j omega t minus e to the power j omega t divided by j omega. So we use Euler, Euler's formula to get the final, final result. It is equal to two 
psi omega t divided by omega. So this psi omega t divided omega, it has another name called the sinc omega. So you may see S i n c omega. So it is the same meaning as here. So the second signal is called is the um, x t is equal to the exponential of minus a t and times the u t. So we only consider the right hand side part. Similarly, we substitute the, this our signal x t into the continuous time Fourier transform. So now the integral is from zero to the infinity. And we substitute e to the power minus a t and calculate, calculate this integral. And we, we get the final um, in the frequency domain, xj omega is equal to one over a plus j omega. The third signal is a signal in discrete time domain. It is a geometric sequence. It is equal to a to the power n times u n. So in the, um, for the discrete time Fourier transform, it is the summation of xn times e to the power j omega n, and it's from zero to the infinity because we, we have u n. Similarly, we, we, uh, we use the summation of a geometric sequence. So the summation of the geometric sequence from zero to infinity in the nominator, it will be the first term. The first term is what we substitute zero into, um, into our equation, which is equal to one. And the denominator is one minus the common term a e to the power minus j omega. So we got this result. So next, we will see some properties of Fourier transform. The properties of Fourier transform is quite similar to the properties of Fourier series. The first one is the linearity. It says that the Fourier transform of the linear combination of the signal, which is a1 x1 t plus a2 x2 t is equal to the linear combination of their Fourier transform which is A1, the Fourier transform of X1 plus A2 times the Fourier transform of X2. The proof is quite si simple. Um, we, we use the um, continuous time Fourier transform. It is equal to the integral of our signal A1, X1 plus A2, X2 times e to the power minus j omega t. And we use the associative rule of the integral and we move the constant beside, behind, before, before our uh, integral. So we have the integral A1 times the integral of X1 e to the power minus j omega t dt. So it, this one is the Fourier transform of X1 T. Similarly, the second term is equal to A2 and we use the Fourier transform is equal to the Fourier transform of X2 T. So we get, we prove the linearity property of the Fourier transform. The second property is the shift pr property. It says that the Fourier transform of a shift version of xt, the xt minus t0 is equal to e to the power minus omega t0 times the Fourier transform of xt. And we have proved this property in our class. So we write down the Fourier transform of xt minus t0 is equal to the integral of x t minus t zero times e to the power j omega t. And we use a trick to split t to t minus t zero plus t zero. And since t 
the term e to the power minus j omega t zero is independent of the variable t. So we, we move it to before. And the second term is it the integral of x t minus t zero and e to the power minus j omega t minus t zero. We use the change of variable and we get it is the same as the Fourier transform of xt. So we get this final result. So in this, this is the shift version of the, um, the signal we see before. So we shift it right with t unit. This, the center before is zero. So the center now is the t. We shift it right for t unit, that means T zero is equal to T. So it will be equal to E to the power minus J omega capital T times the original Fourier transform, which is equal to two sig omega. So we get the final result of the shift, shift signal. This is the shift property of the Fourier transform. The third property is the scaling property. The Fourier transform of x a t is equal to one over the absolute value of a, and the Fourier transform is x j omega divided by a. So, if the uh, we learned in the signal property, if a is larger than one, then we compress our signal. If A is small, greater than zero, but smaller than one, we, we will scratch our signal. So from our original signal to the, to the new signal, actually the A is equal to a half. So A is equal to half. So for the Fourier transform of our new signal, it will, uh, we, we use A equal to half. And since we know the original Fourier transform, we can, we can quickly write the new, the Fourier transform of the new signal by substituting the A equal to half. But we need to check that for each omega, we, we need to change it into two omega. So the final result will be two sine two omega t divided by omega. So you may miss this two here because the omega is in the denominator. When you change to x j omega divided by a is equal to j two omega, you not only need to change the omega into the sine part, but also in the denominator part. So you, you can get final result. Oh, I didn't show the proof of the scaling prop property, but you can check it in the lecture notes. So here is the convolution property. Say the output of our signal yt is equal to the convolution of xt and ht. The, uh, the con continuous time Fourier transform of the convolution signal will be equal to the um, product of the continuous time Fourier transform of these two signals. We can prove, prove it here. So the continuous time Fourier transform of our output signal yt is equal to the integral of yt times e to the power minus j omega t. And we write down the convolution. The convolution of x t h t is the integral of x t minus tau times h tau d tau. Since um, we can change the terms because h tau is independent of t, we move it here and we use the same trick to express t as t minus tau plus tau and move the e to the minus j omega tau here. So similarly, we change the variable, the 
the inside part is equal to the Fourier transform of x t and is equal to capital X j omega. And the second term, it, it is a Fourier transform of h t h tau or h t. It is capital H j omega. So it is the product of the Fourier transform of x t and h t. We prove the convolution property. And finally, uh, I provide a duality property here. So it says that the Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of xt is equal to two pi times x minus t. You can, um, this is for your interest, you can try to prove it for by yourself. Next, let's see some problems. So the fir first problem is about convolution and Fourier transform. Um, we want to determine the Fourier transform of this xt. It is a triangle signal. And we I want you to express the triangular signal xt as, a as the convolution of a rectangular pulse with itself. And third, I want you to, to determine the Fourier transform of the rectangular pulse and find the relation between the Fourier transform of the rectangular pulse and uh, the Fourier transform of the triangular signal. So you have two minutes to think about this problem. You can calculate it by yourself. Okay, so actually we can see that the Fourier transform of, so the, the, triangle, the tri triangular signal xt actually is a convolution of these two rectangular signals, it's, which is the square uh, the, the rectangular signal from minus one to one with the value one. And if, we, if you use the, the Fourier, continuous time Fourier transform of xt, which is equal to t plus one, two when t is in minus two to zero, and it, it is equal to minus two, t plus two when t is from zero to two, we use the Fourier transform to, to calculate the integral, which is the integral of minus two to zero t plus two times e to the power j omega t plus the integral from zero to two. Now it's, and it is minus t plus two times e to the power of minus j omega t. So the integration of this may be a bit hard because you need to 
integration by parts. The meaning of that, um, you are actually integrate the product of two function. The first function is t plus two. The second function is e to the power minus j omega t. So you treat a is equal to t plus two, b to e to the minus j omega t. So the integral will now be a, the integral of b minus the integral of the in, inner part is the differential of the first function times the integral of the second function. So it is a bit hard to do this integration, but then you can get this final result here. And later we, we, we can simplify it to get it is equal to two minus e to the power minus two j omega plus e to the power two j omega divided by the omega square. For the rectangular signal, um, we see it before, the Fourier transform of it is two sine omega divided by omega. So can you tell me the relationship of this, these two uh, Fourier transform? It may not be so clear here, but, um, but it, it is related to a property of the Fourier transform. So can anyone tell me? So it is related due to the convolution property. The convolution property, we said before, the, um, the Fourier transform of the convolution signal, it will be the product of the Fourier transform of each signal. So now the, the, triangles, the triangular signal is the convolution of two independent rectangular signal. So XT is equal to a rect rectangular signal. HT is equal to the rectangular signal as well. So it will be the product of the Fourier transform. So actually the relationship is that the Fourier transform of XT is the square of the Fourier transform of MT, the rectangular signal. Because you can later simplify this using Euler's formula, the e to the power minus two j omega plus e to the power two j omega. It is equal to two cosine two omega. Two cosine omega will be equal to two minus two times one minus sine, sine square omega. So later the, you can get the nominator will be equal to four sine omega, sine the square of sine omega. So it will be the square of two sine omega divided by omega. So this we use the convolution and also the convolution property of the Fourier transform to solve this problem. But uh, uh, this integration by parts may be hard, so you, you need to do it by yourself. So the second problem is the Fourier transform of linear combination. It is quite similar to, the, to what we learned in the lecture notes in the lecture. You also have two minutes to do it by yourself.
Okay, so let's see the result. The original signal xt from minus three to three, it is actually a linear combination of three signal. The first one, we use this green rectangular to represent it. It is equal to x3t is equal to um, one when t is from minus one to one. The second signal is the red signal. It is equal to one from minus two to two. And the third part is also equal to one, but now it's from minus three to three. So xt is equal to x1t plus x2t and x3t. And we use the linear property of the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform of the linear combination is the equal to the linear combination of the Fourier transform. So for each signal, it is, uh, we can also use the scaling property of the, of the Fourier transform to get the final result. So X3T is our original signal is the Fourier transform is two sine omega divided by omega. And the second, the second one, we scale it by a half. So like I said before, it, it will be equal to two sine two omega divided by omega. Similarly for the third part, it will be equal to two sine three omega divided by omega. So this is in this problem, we use the linear property as well as the scaling property of the Fourier transform to solve it. So this is the second problem. The third problem is about the LTI system and the Fourier transform. I, I also show the result here. So I want you to determine the frequency response H j omega of the LTI system, which is the submission. The product, uh, the output is the yt plus a1 times y t minus one plus a2 y t minus two, and the input xt plus b1 xt minus one plus b2 xt minus two. So we do the Fourier transform of both sides. We also need to use the linear property as well as the shift property of the linear of the Fourier transform. And then for the left hand side, it will be equal to yj omega plus a1. Since we shift it by one unit, we need to time use e to the power minus j omega times y j omega, j omega. When we shift it by two units, we need to times e to the power minus j two j omega. Similar for the x j omega, the first term is the same. The second term we shift by one unit, then we need to times e to the power minus j omega. The second term times e to the power minus two j omega. So the third part we, we use the convolution property. The convolution property says that the y j omega is equal to h j omega times x j omega. So if we want to get the h j omega, it will be y j omega divided by x j omega. So we, we arrange the terms to get the final result. It is equal to one plus b1 e to the power minus j omega plus b2 e to the power Two minus two j omega divided by one plus a one e to the power minus j omega plus a two e to the power minus two j omega. So we can also further arrange the terms and split it into the, these three terms. Uh, so I ask about the frequency response here. If I if I ask the time response, you need to convert h j omega back into h t. So there are two ways you convert, convert it back. The first one is, is to use the inverse Fourier transform. 
So it is equal to one over two pi, the integral of hj omega times e to the power j omega t d omega. The second way is to use the pair of the Fourier transform. So you, you need to, for example, remember some of the, the pair of the function. So the simple, the simplest are, for example, you need to remember the Fourier transform of a delta function, the Fourier transform of the constant, the Fourier transform of the rectangular, rectangular signal is two sine omega t divided by omega. So these are simple way because many of the Fourier transform are the combination or, or they are the strict version, the scaling version of it. If you, you remember some of the basic one, you can, sim you can easily construct it back from the Fourier transform into the original time signal. So um, that's all I prepared for today's tutorial. Do you have any questions? So if, if you don't have question, that will be the end of today's tutorial. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.